welcome. Good, 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 good morning, e-commerce. I am wearing my uh, uh, Florida shirt today in honor of our co-host, David Yarbrough, who can't be with us today because he's on site at the CSCMP in Orlando. So for those folks who are out there, please go by and see him. I am your host, Ray Roberts, and welcome to Intangible Commerce Wednesday. And thank you so much for joining Really excited to see everybody here and appreciate all the support for the now well over 100 of you who come out and, and visit us and, and take a look at the podcast. And, oh, wait, before I forget, look, 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 look what I did. If you're on YouTube anyway, you can look. If you're not, get on there because I got some new lights. Whoa. I think I've showed those last time, but in transparency, I meant to turn those on and I just didn't because that's what we do sometimes. We forget things, especially on Wednesday morning. I want to jump into, if any of those folks out there who follow me on my LinkedIn, you would have seen the FTC has sued Amazon and it's really not a shock. I mean, I don't know how many times I've heard this. It's, uh, Hey, Amazon's out there, and if you put something on Amazon that's a new product or something you're making, that or buying rather, not making. If it's a custom thing, it's difficult for them. But if it's like a, hey, I'm selling Frisbees, and I'm going to sell them in these certain colors at this certain price, and then the next thing you know, Amazon Basics. Frisbees, same color, lower price. Funneling business to them, using data from their own web platform to identify products to sell and it's a brilliant business plan they use you the consumer or not the consumer the uh, the retailer as their guinea pig figure out what's profitable figure out what's not amazon basics boom here we go brilliant i mean brilliant can't can't fault them for having a good strategy but the ftc says this is an illegal monopoly of business you can't do this you can't come in and undercut the entire market simply because you have the ability to do so it's not fair so they've sued amazon they said hey enough's enough um we're gonna sue you and um that that's that we're, we're done with this nonsense you know, and also this isn't on the uh, too too far ago that they've also got. And maybe it's uh, the government versus Amazon. I don't know, but they also uh, aren't super happy with uh, the. Uh, what am I trying to say? I need more coffee. I need more coffee. The reviews. They aren't too happy with the reviews. We've seen this, and everybody sort of knows this happens. It's where. Most of the reviews, nah, maybe not most, but a lot of uh, good members say, let's say, let's call it 45%. 45% of the reviews you see, websites like Amazon and, and even others, aren't real. They're fake reviews. They're either generated by the various number of companies out there that will generate reviews for you, or they're user generated by the owner, proprietor, and people of the business themselves who will purchase the item and send you, you know, the thing and you get a review. And oh, this is five star, it's fantastic. But you have to sort through that. You gotta go to Google and search items up there to find out what's really going on with that product or service or whatever. You really need to do that because a lot of what you're seeing is fake. And, and Amazon has been a big culprit of that for a long time. So the FTC has had enough of that as well. So there's a couple of things going on right now with, with Amazon that I think is for the better. I mean, obviously, we want to have a fair market. We want to have a fair shake at, at, at business. And having sold on Amazon myself, I know how competitive it can be. I know how uh, that that you know prime button in, in the buy box, I know how important those are. But when Amazon is forcing you into services like FBA and then hiking the price of FBA, the the competitiveness, like if you look at all the other three PLs that do FBA style service, right? They house your goods and ship them to your end customer. Those three PLs are charging a much different rate than what Amazon is charging. 
And Amazon does it because they know they can. And they know it. They don't care. It's because their user group is so large. Their reach is so vast. Over 60% of e-com transactions happen on their platform. And they know it. So it's evening this out, right? It's the icing on the cake has got a big lump in it. And the FTC, by all indication, is coming in to smooth that out, to help even the market, to reduce that monopoly. Now, whether or not you agree that that's what the FTC is doing, I would love to hear your perspective on that so we can have a uh, deeper conversation about what is really going on with this whole thing. One could say it's um, not monopoly crushing, but, but maybe some political, you know, let's call it meandering is behind all this because in a lot of ways um that's how the government works they want something you don't do it they come at yeah who knows who knows but i would love to get some additional perspective on what you feel is happening with amazon specifically in this case they've got two major things happening at the same time and it just seems like either these investigations have dropped at the same time or they were going in parallel for a certain reason. We'll see. In another crazy e-com news, Indonesia is back at it again. It's almost like, and I think I said this last time, I really wanted to look into it. I haven't had a chance. The folks who own or own, who run the government, what business venture do they have their hands in? Because this sort of a, it, it is a bombshell. They have banned e-com transactions on social media platforms. All of them. So it's like the shop app in uh, TikTok and in even Instagram, you see the product in there and, and maybe you want to buy that product. I'm guessing they're going to have to link an external link to that product because the in-app service that TikTok and all these folks are offering, it's not going to work for you. Uh, you're not going to, you're not going to have the ability to purchase from within those apps on Indonesia, right? Indonesia. So, um, that's a big blow to TikTok's plan. Although I don't know that they're super concerned with the Indonesian market. It is an emerging market. The fastest growing e-com market is actually uh, not Indonesia, but India. And I know they've also, excuse me, they've also taken some steps to protecting their their local markets, the heritage that that, that uh, encompasses. And I've got a guest coming on pretty soon that's going to talk to us more about that. Um, so we could really understand how does that e-commerce market and, and traditional market in India, how is that changing the landscape of the future of e-commerce and the future of even local business? Because it doesn't stop there, right? What happens on e-com is now changing the way we do business in the retail sector as well. So I'm really interested to look more into that. But more on TikTok, the expansion of TikTok, you know, at first it was it was looking like they were going to um, have their own warehouses and their own uh, delivery services and all that. Sort of like what you would see with like a Shein, like Shein's based out of, I think, City of Industry in California is where their distribution center is. Um, but they're not going to do that. It looks like in the most recent news, TikTok is partnering with a 3PL service who shall remain unnamed. <laughs> no free advertising here, buddy. Uh, but they're using a 3PL service to, to push their goods and services uh, to folks. When you buy online, it's gonna come from a third party uh, company, which I think is a good thing. I think it's a good thing for a number of reasons. So I think, and maybe I'm speaking for my generation, I don't think that the younger generation cares where the products come from. And that's, that's a problem in its own right. Like we, we do need to help folks to understand why it's important to protect our economy and to buy goods that are being distributed, at least distributed from the United States. 
meaning they've gone through the import, they've gone through and they've paid their duties and taxes to bring the products in, and then they're distributed from within our country. So the workers in those warehouses and the folks who run those places and the truckers who ship the stuff in, all those folks are spending their dollars in America, or for the most part, because they're living here, they're eating here, they're doing business here, they're, they're recreationing here. That helps our economy. The problem with things that don't do that, it's just the product, a single unit coming in of AirPods, as an example. That single unit goes through our postal system. It's got a special regulation because it's such a low value that the duties and taxes is sometimes zero, not always, but sometimes zero or very minuscule. And it's going through US Postal Service to be delivered, which is not supporting our economy anywhere near the same way that like a Shein is going to, in this case, TikTok um, isn't limiting their goods to just things that are made and manufactured in China. It's anybody. Anybody can go on there and, and post their goods, products, and services on TikTok in the app, show how you're doing it. The power washers. I know there's a lot of popularity around that. You've got the clothing, of course, and you get the food products, all those things you can go on. You can buy them now from within the app which is something that Instagram, fair enough, has been doing for couple, I mean, years now, <laughs> years and years and years. So TikTok, I think, is evolving into and shaping itself into this new age platform of I want to see it before I use it. I do believe that that is something um, that will eventually rival that of Amazon because it's a hands on generation. It's a buy now generation. It's a knee jerk reaction generation that's doing this buying. Whereas I might see something, want to research it and figure out, hey, does this thing even work for me? What are the dimensions of it? If it's something I'm buying for like a production studio type thing, or if it's a workout equipment or a shirt or whatever, you know, I'm the type who wants to put my hands on and, and actually understand what its product is. A lot of folks aren't like that anymore. A lot of folks aren't like that anymore. They they want to see it, be inspired by it, which isn't a bad thing. And they want to buy it right now. A little blink pops up. They're more likely to click that. Which, if it's in-app purchases, kind of leads us down a different road. How many folks here have uh, have kids? Younger kids. Who... I don't know, maybe watch kids or people playing with toys on TikTok, you know? Um, and if that little in-app purchase pops up and they're able to boop, purchase now. <laughs> I don't, I'm not actually, as you might be able to tell, I've not purchased off of it yet. So I don't know exactly how that works. Maybe that's something I should discover for myself before I talk too much about it. But it seems to me, I don't think it was that long ago that Apple was in the news because children were racking up thousands and thousands of dollars in in-app purchases. There was one kid who purchased $10,000 or something in, in, this, in this stupid like phone game, like for extra lives or something like that. So it's like, Okay, is this going to be like, you know, uh, a part two of that story where now these kids can buy actual goods, you know, they're going to see their their favorite toy, they're going to, you know, purchase, purchase, purchase their, you know, that, that, that toy every time they see it. And so I, I Lord, I hope, <laughs> I hope for, for your sake, it's not something I got to worry about. My, my kids are, are, are uh, you know, all teenagers by now. So, um, but man, I could, I could totally see that being a thing and, and frustrating the heck out of a lot of folks. And, and I don't think that TikTok and other folks like look at Apple, you know, they've been doing that for a long time. I don't think they care too much about your child's accidental purchases, but maybe they do. I don't know. I can't speak for them because I've not tried it. So you know what? Try it before you buy it. I, I, I'll I'll see if I can't. Uh, I'll fall on that nail, that bed of nails, or so. What is it? No, fall on a bed of nails. Good grief! I need more coffee. I will fall on that sword for us. 
or if you've already done it, not fallen on a sword. Don't do that. If you've already uh, purchased on TikTok, what is that experience like? Maybe you'll write a little comment down below or shoot me over an email or something we can have you on if it's something you've got a lot of experience with. I'm sure folks will be curious to hear more about it uh, and just understand what is changing and shaping the e-commerce market as we continue down the path of honestly unforged territory in the way of of TikTok with the influence it has with uh, all these other brands and things going on. You've got Amazon is shifting its model and, and clearly FTC is saying, hey, it's time for change at this echelon. How long until you know, Amazon starts to get in on that game too? Or maybe, you know, I don't even know. I don't know. Maybe that's, maybe that's a topic for a different video altogether. Maybe that's a topic of when will we see Amazon's app change its model? And I don't want to call it a TikTok style because I think that might be a bit goofy for what they are and true to their roots that a lot of companies try to stick to. But as we look at the future, it's like, man, it's change or die. Like that's that's the model. That's the, today's moniker of of business. Change is the only constant. You have to reinvent yourself. And the speed of market these days is not like what we used to see. I mean, go back even 10 years ago, 15 years ago. You've got companies who have a message. They stick to that branding. They stick to that message because that's their um, identity. That's who they are. This is who we are. This is what we're all about. And we're going to keep doing it that way, doing it that way, doing it. Today's market, today's buyer, the, the, the teens and 20s and even early 30s that are coming into the market and being a bigger player in the market, they don't care. They don't care. What do they care about? The data tells us that those folks care more about your corporate values than your branding. Branding is important, but if I look behind that layer and I see that, oh, this company doesn't do any donating, doesn't do any give back, doesn't do any recycling or earth first or anything like that, consumers don't want to support that brand anymore. And we, and we see that these fast emerging e-coms, these gigantically growing companies that you see leap three, 400% year over year. What is that growth coming from? That product has been on the market. There are shampoo bars and all sorts of different things that have, this stuff is not new. It's been around. What's the difference? That company cares. They're giving back. They're, they're new. They're led by typically younger leadership who has a vision of the product and the growth of the product, but also a vision of Let's give back. Let's be community involved. Let's do things different. And if you think that that's going to stop anytime soon, then look at, you know, cancel culture and, and who's perpetuating that the, the kids coming out of high school and getting into college who eventually will be the major consumers and the major uh, market players that, that we want to draw business to or from rather those folks care about these things. So it is vitally important that for those out there right now who are running and owning businesses and thinking about corporate strategy and how do we be different? How do we, how do we grow hundred percent, 200 percent, 300 percent? Good God. It's ridiculous. You know, some folks are just trying to grow too. Oh, stop. Look at that. Look at this. Look at this. Sorry. I, I had an alarm set. <laughs> That's not my ramble alarm. Although I do tend to do that on my very own podcast. So it's kind of what I'm out here for. Thank you, Alarm. Because all that to say, how you define yourself today will matter over the next three to 10 years. And if you don't redefine yourself in between there incrementally, staying up with what's important, you're going to have problems. And for the love of God, 
stay away from polarizing topics. I am not suggesting that you come out and, and declare yourself as anything in support of anyone. I'm saying the topics that really matter, the environment, the support of our communities, taking care of your own employees, that that matters. That matters a lot to the up and coming consumer. The upcoming consumer will spend more money for the same product. It has been shown that the younger generation considers price third or fourth in their list of what's the most important. Speed is the most important by far. If you can get the same product to me faster, it's $3 more. I will pay it. That is what the consumer is saying. They will pay to get the same product faster. They will pay to have a brand that cares about the environment, that cares about giving back and its employees. Brand identity is second or third on the list, depending on which list you're looking at. Reviews are important as well. So the main three, speed, get it to me fast. I'll pay more money. Good reviews. I want to know that other people are satisfied. Video is very, very important there too. So get video on your websites ASAP. And three, what do you support? What are you doing as a brand to give back? So, hey guys, do these things, right? Stay up to speed on what's going on in, in the high schools. Ask people, what do your high schoolers care about these days? What are the topics and issues that, 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 that gets them excited or gets them upset? And understand that in that time frame of growth, if you're looking at a 10 year plan, those, you know, those, um, what the buying starts around 17, 18, maybe even call it 19 in 10 years, they're 30. They're, they're your target audience. They're your fastest spenders in that range. So make sure that your growth plan isn't focused on the market you see today. Address today's market, prepare for tomorrow's. Can't stress it enough. Get ready and have good reviews. I mean, for God's sake, guys, it's not that good. If, I know how common it is for companies. It is tempting to put a review on your website that says it's, oh, it's a fantastic product. Be honest, right? Come on, take take it down. Bring, bring down this wall. You can't be doing it. I don't know if anybody, of course, no one who listens to Intangible Commerce would be posting fake reviews on their website. But if they are, if they are, you're in trouble. <laughs> and on that bombshell, I wish you all a fantastic day. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Intangible Commerce. I hope you have a great Wednesday. Great middle week. You're looking great. Appreciate you coming out. Good luck, Dave. He may or may not have been eaten by an alligator or a crocodile. I forgot what they have in Florida. Probably both. Or a boa constrictor. But if he has, goodbye, Dave. <laughs> All right, guys, and on that bombshell, again, we're out. Thank you so much, and have a great day.